Here is the luxury saloon by which all others are measured. This improved sixth generation Mercedes S-Class is more affordable to run and even cleverer to use, but its real strengths continue to remain in comfort and refinement. What we've got here may represent a mid-term update, but the changes are far-reaching. Under the bonnet, there are all new petrol and diesel engines, the cabin's been completely upgraded, and there are further steps towards fully autonomous driving. It all adds up to a package that will continue to leave this as the world's best-selling full luxury sector saloon. With four million sales on the board, the S-Class reigns supreme in its segment. The Mercedes S-Class. It's traditionally been the sensible answer to the question every motoring expert likes to dodge. What's the best car in the world? Other vehicles can be more opulent, faster or better to drive, but over the years, no other model has so consistently delivered such a technologically advanced blend of automotive virtues. Here, we're looking at a vastly improved version of the sixth generation model. And we mean vastly improved. Over 6,000 components have either been created or redesigned to change the W222 series model launched back in 2013 into the car you see here, which makes this the most comprehensive midlife update made to any car in Mercedes history. You can see why the Stuttgart maker felt the need to do that with all new versions of BMW 7 Series, Audi's A8, Porsche's Panamera and the Lexus LS all recently launched with jaw-dropping technology in a bid to tempt away traditional S-Class buyers. There are plenty of them because this car has such a long and distinguished history in the full luxury boardroom segment, known as the S-Class or Sonderklasse, ever since this badging was first introduced on the W116 series model of 1972. This current car, though, has a tougher brief than any of its predecessors. At its entry point, it must satisfy successful top-level managers, while at the other end of the lineup, the same design with greater power and opulence must also be good enough to meet the exalted expectations of the Rolls-Royce and Bentley buyers that the Stuttgart maker aims to snare with its exclusive Mercedes Maybach brand. To achieve that, this car will have to be groundbreaking, but then the S-Class always has been. Models like this are state-of-the-art test beds for the best that their brands can produce. Some features will forever be limited to plutocratic purses, but many others will eventually filter down into the everyday mainstream, and there are plenty of examples of that. This, after all, was the luxury saloon that in 1978 pioneered anti-lock brakes, in 1981 introduced airbags, seatbelt pretensioners and traction control, and by 1992 it was the first car to be built entirely free from harmful CFCs. At its original launch, this W222 series model built on that with industry-leading hybrid engine technology and a super clever anticipatory suspension system able to detect and respond to irregularities in the road ahead. Now, this car has been further embellished with the brand's latest autonomous driving tech, plus there's an all-new interior, a redesigned V8 petrol power plant, and most importantly, a completely new 2.9-litre V6 engine for the S350D diesel variant that almost all S-Class buyers in our market choose. Lots to look at then. Let's put this car to the test. The S-Class epitomizes Mercedes. It was around long before the brand started selling SUVs, MPVs, crossovers and pickups, and it still defines the brand better than any other model in the lineup. In creating this updated sixth generation version, the directive to the engineers was the same as it's always been with this flagship contender, build the best car in the world. Now we debated long and hard over whether this W222 series model actually was when it was first launched back in 2013, but we struggled a little with the fact that in switching from the previous design, uh, Mercedes has carried over so much of the engineering beneath the bonnet virtually unchanged. Unsurprisingly then, the biggest part of the redevelopment budget devoted to this updated car has been spent on fresh engines, with the principal news being the replacement of the most popular S350D models aging 3 litre 258 bhp diesel with a new era 3 litre 286 bhp unit we're trying here. 
It's also available uh, with 335 bhp and an uprated S400D variant, and Mercedes has directed just as much effort into improving its petrol proposition too. Uh, the alternative green pump fueled S500 featuring another brand new 3 litre 6, uh, this one putting out 457 bhp and drawing on what Mercedes calls systematically electrified technology to simultaneously boost power while saving fuel. Whatever engine you choose, the S-Class experience remains a special one, even by the opulent standards of the boardroom segment. Now, the key to this car is the sense of well-being you get as you take in the quietly classy dashboard, you sink into seats that feel as if they've been tailored to fit, and you start to wonder how you're ever going to learn how this massively complex Mercedes works. Throughout, there's a reassurance that you're in the most thoroughly engineered luxury saloon that money can buy. Specified correctly, it will drive for you, it will park for you, and it'll cost it to you in a way that few cars at any price can. That is the S-Class way. In evaluating what's on offer in a little more detail, uh, perhaps we should start with the issue of the moment when it comes to cars in this segment, autonomous driving. Uh, now, current legislation doesn't yet allow full automotive autonomy, but at the wheel of this car, you uh, really realise just how close we are to that. To make sure that the S-Class is state-of-the-art in this regard, uh, Mercedes has embellished the drive pilot technology that was introduced into the 10th generation E-Class with navigational algorithms that come as part of what it calls a route-based speed adaptation. And that's a system available as part of an extra cost driving assistance plus pack. These algorithms anticipate traffic conditions and they prepare the car in advance for roundabouts, corners and junctions. So, uh, for example, the car will automatically slow down when you're nearing a toll booth or a motorway exit. And if you uh, happen to be approaching a queue of traffic that has started to move, it will slow to seamlessly match the speed of the tailback. Apparently, the new technology allows uh, the autonomous system to function on a wider range of roads too, although we still wouldn't recommend that you use it on anything other than a dual carriageway. Assuming that you have that optional pack fitted, it will all work once you've activated the sophisticated Active Distance Assist Distronic Cruise Control and you've pressed these two little buttons to the right of the wheel, uh, one for Active Steering Assist and the other one for Active Lane Keeping Assist. Now with all this working, the car is fully ready to drive itself, although it will demand that you prove you're paying attention by clutching on the steering wheel every few seconds. A particular party piece is the active lane changing assist system which will allow the car to overtake by itself with just a jab on the indicator stalk and then slot itself back into lane as soon as it's safe to do so. Finally, when you reach your journey's end, your S-Class will of course park itself and if the bay that you want to access is so tight that you won't be able to open the door once you're in the space, uh, then an available remote parking pilot package will allow you to stand outside the car and park it with an app on your phone. Enough on autonomy, what uh, is the experience like when you drive this S-Class yourself? Well, surprisingly unintimidating is the answer. It drives very much like an E-Class and after the first few miles, you quickly forget the prodigious length and width. Even through the bends, it's not immediately obvious that you're piloting something weighing well over two tons. Uh, the brakes are reassuring and even the steering isn't too remote, although it is predictably lighter on feedback than is the case with the rival Jaguar XJ or BMW 7 Series. What we did anticipate was an exemplary standard of ride, which to a point is what you get. The full air suspension that you now expect from a car in this class is of course a standard feature, adapting its demeanor to the comfort, uh, sport, sport plus and individual settings provided by the dynamic select driving mode system. Now these also tweak steering feel and the responses of the 9G Tronic plus nine speed automatic transmission that's been introduced to replace the previous seven speed unit. With this smoother gearbox effortlessly slurring between the ratios and dynamic select set to comfort, this Mercedes eases over dips and bumps with an impressively unflustered gait, particularly at higher speeds. 
Around town though, we did notice the occasional pothole and speed hump that uh, would have passed without comment in a rival BMW 7 Series or Lexus LS, which if you like this car and you know a little about this current model's engineering, is annoying because Mercedes already has the technology to make it easily class leading in this regard. This W222 series design was launched with the option of what the brand calls Magic Body Control. That's a clever setup that uses a stereo camera to read the road 15 meters ahead for bumps and instantly adapts the suspension to deal with them. Now originally you could specify this setup across the range, now you can't. And Mercedes won't tell us why. Magic Body Control is now only available as standard on an S-Class variant that almost nobody will buy, the V12-powered S65 Mercedes-AMG model, which is frustrating because the setup's been further improved to work at night and it can now operate in concert with a neat curve tilting function which leans the car into bends like a motorcycle and reduces the sideways g-forces that you'd otherwise get. The S65 is one of two Mercedes-AMG S-Class variants on offer and it uses the same 630 bhp 6-litre engine that you'll also find in the plutocratic Mercedes Maybach S650 limousine that sits at the top of the range. If you want a truly sporting version of this car though, you're much better off saving quite a lot of money and choosing the lesser S63 V8 version, which in this facelifted range swaps its previous 35.5 litre unit for a more efficient twin turbo 4 litre unit also found in this performance sub-brand's GT sports car. An S63 offers 612 bhp, but its engine's lighter weight and more eager response probably makes it faster than an S65 in the real world. Uh, this reality aided further by the news that of the two variants, it's only the S63 that gets the new 9-speed auto gearbox. Uh, Mercedes says that both models can get to 62 miles an hour in a fraction over 4 seconds on the way to a top speed that, as with all S-Class variants, uh, must be rather pointlessly limited to 155 miles an hour. Mind you, even the new S500 six-cylinder petrol model we mentioned at the beginning gets within half a second of that sprint time thanks to a cutting-edge 48-volt electrical system that uh, supplies an electric compressor. And that's basically a turbocharger powered by an electric motor, hence this variant's instant throttle response. The diesels aren't far behind that level of acceleration either. This S350D making 62 miles an hour in six seconds flat, uh, showing that the S400D improves to just 5.4 seconds. The petrol electric plug-in hybrid derivative that you can ask your dealer about is equally rapid. In short, whichever S-Class variant you select, performance will not be lacking which makes it a tad disappointing that uh, Mercedes still hasn't got around to engineering in the kind of four-wheel drive system that rivals BMW and Audi both offer to help control the kind of prodigious power outputs that top versions of cars in this class can now provide. Uh, continental market S-Class models have long had the Mercedes 4MATIC setup, but apparently it can't be packaged for right-hand drive cars, which does seem a major omission from a, such an engineering-led brand. Not much else is missing from this car though. Uh, perhaps most significantly, the new power plant in this S350D has made refinement even more exemplary than it was before, to the point where sometimes you uh, start to think the stop-start system has kicked in when the engine is actually still running. As a result, uh, for the most part, apart from a bit of tyre roar, the only discernible sounds you'll hear on the move will either come from your passengers or from the glorious Burmester audio system that most owners specify. Ultimately though, perhaps the most significant change with this improved S-Class has um, rather less to do with drivers or passengers and more to do with the vision it brings of the future. And uh, just to illustrate that, let's leave you with this. As each model is built and reaches the end of the production line at Mercedes Sindelfingen factory, it is now no longer driven off by a human those autonomous operating features automatically drive it out of the plant and into the holding area. Change then is coming and this car embraces it. People all around the world can recognize an S-Class right away. It's elegant styling ever, an expression of luxury and the automotive grandeur of its era. 
With this model, Mercedes has always sought to combine progressive design with classic cues to a heritage that extends all the way back to its roots in 1926. It was an approach continued by the flowing silhouette of this W222 sixth generation design at its original launch in 2013, with its long bonnet, its flowing domed roof line and gently slanting rear end. Only subtle changes were required to update the look, and that's exactly what this revised model delivers. Most of these are found at the front where there are freshly designed multi-beam LED headlamps incorporating this smart trio of daytime running light strips and featuring ultra range hide beams that operate at the maximum light output allowed by the law. Uh, between these, uh, there's a revised and even more imposing radiator grille that now favors a simpler design with three chromed horizontal twin louvres. Most of the actual cooling though is dealt with by this larger uh, lower opening that's flanked by more prominent um, corner intakes that on standard models feature these smart twin chromed bars. Not much has changed from a side perspective where a tall dignified glass house emphasizes a profile that can be a little boxier for this generation of S-Class saloon now that the brand can also offer up a dedicated coupe model within the Sonder class lineup. Uh, this four door is still classically elegant though. It's fashioned around what Mercedes calls a dropping line, a uh, center crease that descends discreetly from the front to a rear section where this pronounced shoulder above the back wheel gives the rear end of the car a power packed look. We have a long wheelbase saloon in this case, but at first glance, you don't immediately realize that because here there isn't the slightly odd elongated look that characterizes long wheelbase versions of some of this car's competitors. That's because unlike those rivals, it was originally designed around the longer body shape rather than styled in shorter form and then stretched. The difference shows. All mainstream S-Class models now get AMG line trim as a minimum, which means you get an AMG body styling package for the front and rear aprons, as well as for the side skirts. Uh, these are separated by now larger 19-inch five twin-spoke AMG alloy rims that better fill those large arches. At the rear, the key change lies with the subtly revised lamp clusters that now feature classier fiber optics with crystal look jewel-like illumination that makes more of a statement at night. They're LED powered inevitably. Uh, the original version of this sixth generation S-Class was the first car in the world to do without a single light bulb inside and out. Of course, of more importance is the stuff you can't see, uh, primarily a sleek, wind-cheating, high-tech body shell, more than half of which is fashioned from light weight aluminium, which is why it can offer class-leading torsional rigidity. The vast amount of effort that Mercedes has put into improving this S-Class isn't immediately obvious from the outside, but it certainly is once you take a seat behind the wheel here. Other rivals have uh, superbly crafted cabins too, but none of them offer quite the same sense of opulent indulgence that you get here. As brands newer to this segment like uh, Audi and Tesla have found, getting wood, leather and metal to blend together with cohesive elegance is difficult to do. This Mercedes sets that standard. Smooth curves and horizontal elements give a feeling of width, solidity and premium quality without compromising on ergonomics. Although, of course, it isn't perfect. Uh, in this particular case, we're not especially impressed by the brown plastic finish featuring on the column stalks. And overall, we do have to wonder whether BMW has better rationalized the mix of buttons and on-screen menus. Ah oh yes, the screens. Well, they certainly dominate this cabin. Two 12.3-inch high-resolution TFT displays that one more dismissive colleague once described as looking like a couple of iPads shunted together. We actually think they look rather sleek with wondrous graphics that make those on some rival infotainment systems look very old-fashioned. Uh, the screen directly ahead of the driver performs all the functions that you'd expect from a conventional instrument cluster. Uh, most of the other information that you'll need is to be found on the uh, center dash screen that uh, delivers the bewildering functionality that's promised by Mercedes command infotainment system. To be fair, uh, this isn't bad in its user friendliness, but there's a heck of a lot of depth in it that some buyers just won't take the time to learn. 
You oversee quite a few of the functions of this double screen arrangement via these neat little smartphone style touch pads on the now much smarter three spoke Nappa leather trim steering wheel. Now these also now deal with the cruise control. So making unnecessary that awkward old column stalk that featured for that purpose on the original version of this car. Now using these little pads, uh, you can customize the instrument display ahead of you via three settings. The classic and sport layouts give you two virtual dials, or you can choose a so-called um, progressive setup, and that focuses on one gauge, uh, the bottom of which can depict a neat little safety assistance graphic if required. You can set up the right of the instrument monitor to show a rev counter, navigation information, uh, date information, or an eco display that helps you drive more efficiently. Uh, the center dash command screen's functionality is primarily controlled uh, by what at first glance looks as though it might be the auto gear stick. It isn't, um, as usual on a mainstream Mercedes, gears are dealt with by a steering column stalk here. Instead, as on the brand's other cars, this rather futuristic looking protuberance uh, manages all your infotainment needs with a rotary dial that swivels, slides and pushes uh, below a higher surface touchpad that permits uh, letters numbers and special characters to be handwritten. Although in this right-hand drive model, of course, there's the awkwardness of having to do that with your left hand. If you can master all that, then you'll quickly find that there's a huge amount of content on the command monitor. Uh, particularly nice are the vehicle sections that give you uh, engine data dials and which allow you to tailor your preferred driving settings via the Dynamic Select driving mode system. Uh, there is Linguatronic voice control and all the usual DAB audio infotainment stuff too, of course, uh, with 3D mapping and live traffic information. Plus, you can also connect in your smartphone via the Android Auto or Apple CarPlay systems. Um, now, it's also possible to create an integrated WLAN, that's Wireless Local Area Network Hotspot. In addition, the package provides a media segment, uh, which will give you uh, a web browser for things like Facebook and the useful MB Apps section. Now, this includes uh, weather reports, access to internet radio, and a useful local search function, which will allow you to find, well, anything from a filling station to a fish restaurant, a passenger terminal to a parking space. But enough on media connectivity, just save the quality. Getting the specification right to uh, coordinate the colors and textures is key when buying this car. So do take your time and if in doubt, go for the conservative option. Uh, get a bit more expressive and things can go German fashion quite quickly, which is rarely a good thing. Avoid that though and you really can't go too far wrong with a cabin that's this intricately crafted. Metalized switch surfaces with pearl effect paint finishes, uh, ornate speaker grills, grooved organ stop controls for the distinctive metal eyeball air vents, a uh, beautiful center dash analog clock, and ambient lighting with no fewer than 64 configurable colors are all features that will resonate with this car's intended clientele. It's all evidence of superb attention to detail that features around an interior trimmed in lustrous buttery leather with seats that can cool and massage you and which can even include uh, heated armrests. A fresh optional feature developed for this revised model that Mercedes is especially proud of is the Energizing Comfort Package. Uh, now this is built as a one-touch route to complete interior serenity, coordinating the climate control, the fragrance dispenser, the music and the interior lighting with seat heating, cooling and massage into six preset programs, each configured with an appropriately soothing soundtrack. Stressed CEOs are gonna love it. Unfortunately, the fragrance dispenser that's part of that whole setup takes up an inordinate amount of space in the air-conditioned glove box and another practical issue lies in the shallowness of this central storage box between the seats uh, which incorporates USB and SD card slots with a wireless phone charging mat. Still, there are decently sized door pockets, uh, there is an overhead compartment for your sunglasses, and there's a smart lidded cubby at the bottom of the center stack that incorporates a couple of cup holders and a 12 volt port.
Let's take a seat in the rear, where, as at the front, the doors open very wide, especially you've got the uh, long wheelbase body cell we're trying here, which is 121 millimeters longer. That'll allow even the most amply proportioned passenger to enter with appropriate dignity. And what you'll find inside depends on which of the rear seat packages you've chosen to specify. Uh, stand models get a conventional three-person rear bench, but if you have the long wheelbase body style that features across most of the range, it's quite likely that you'll want to stretch out and relax in the layout that we've got here, courtesy of the individual rear seats package. And this gives you two separate chairs that are electrically operated and ventilated with opulent cushioned head restraints and a backrest that's adjustable by up to 37 degrees. They're separated by this center console, the lower part of which features a storage box with twin USB points and an HDMI point, and from which can emerge a couple of rather unstable fold-out tables. Further forward as part of this package, uh, you get a couple of cup holders that heat or cool drinks, although access to these and the provided 12 volt sockets is rather impeded by this protruding wireless phone charging attachment. Uh, powered side and rear window blinds are included too, and if you're prepared to pay even more, you can also add in an extra rear cabin zone for the Thermotronic Climate Control System and a rear seat entertainment system, which adds a couple of 10.2 inch seatback screens that connect into a DVD Blu-ray player that is located in this uh, upper center storage compartment. Tick the right boxes and the setup can also potentially work with a TV tuner and a surround sound Burmester audio system too. Here we've also got the electric panoramic glass sunroof that comes as part of the optional premium pack. And even with this fitted, you still get these lovely uh, overhead illuminated fold out vanity mirrors. Let's finish by taking a look in the boot, the lid for which is of course power operated. Uh, the space you get inside varies with the variant you choose. In this S350D you get 510 litres, that's a fraction more than an Audi A8 and a fraction less than a BMW 7 Series. In petrol versions like the S500 and the S63 that figure rises to 530 litres because those derivatives don't need to incorporate this diesel model's extra tank of AdBlue additive. Uh, go for one of the individual rear seat packages though and because of the way this setup impinges into the trunk, boot capacity falls to just 470. 70 litres. Now we can understand why. I mean, if you have the two-seat arrangement at the rear, it's not possible for Mercedes to offer folding rear seat backs to extend luggage room. However, we can't see why that facility couldn't be offered to buyers opting for a conventional three-person rear bench in this car. Unfortunately, it hasn't been. Uh, another thing missing is a provision for any kind of spare wheel, although the lack of that does free up space for this deep recess beneath the boot floor. Uh, you don't get the natty fold-out shopping crate that features in many of Mercedes' other large models either. And bag hooks are notable by their absence in the trunk area, although you do get a 12-volt socket and netted areas for smaller items on either side. Prices for mainstream S-Class saloon models sit mainly in the £75,000 to £90,000 bracket, but of course it's possible to pay a great deal more than that. Uh, five subtly different four-door body styles are available with the improved version of this sixth generation W222 series S-Class model, uh, so we'll talk you through them. Uh, the standard saloon comes in short wheelbase form if you choose the base S350D diesel variant, but most buyers will opt for it in the lengthened long wheelbase form that we're trying here, which is the body shape that you have to have if you go for any of the other standard model engines, or indeed the plug-in hybrid variant that you can talk to your dealer about. The V8 powered S63 and the V12 powered S65 Mercedes AMG models come in long wheelbase form too, but revised body styling means these variants are slightly lengthier still. Expect to pay just under 130,000 for the S63 and just under 190,000 for the S65. Uh, these derivatives are aimed at S class customers who like to drive themselves. Chairman of the board types who don't will be more interested in the Mercedes Maybach uh, S650 V8. 
the 12 model, which costs around £175,000 and incorporates an even more opulent rear seat package into the long wheelbase body shape. For these people, the ultimate option is the stratospherically priced Mercedes Maybach Pullman, a 6.5 metre Leviathan with a 1.35 metre rear door and a rear compartment with two pairs of seats facing each other. Only a handful of Pullmans will be built and many will feature armour body plating. Despot dictators everywhere should form an orderly queue. We should also mention that Mercedes has long used S-Class technology to underpin large coupe and cabriolet models. And since 2014, these derivatives have gained S-Class badging. Uh, the coupe and cabriolet variants share most of the same midterm updates made to this saloon model, but they're only based around the most powerful petrol engines available. So they all sell at six figure sums, starting at just over the 100,000 pound mark for the coupe. Uh, buyers of these two-door models choose between an S560 4-litre V8 variant or the S63 and S65 derivatives, the latter two versions costing around £2,000 more than their saloon counterparts. There's a premium of around £12,000 if you want to progress from an S-Class Coupe to an S-Class Cabriolet. Our primary focus in this film, though, is on the S350D saloon model we're trying here, the overwhelming choice for S-Class buyers in our market. Uh, this revised model range offers this 286 bhp V6 diesel variant only with sporty AMG line trim. There's a £2,800 premium to pay if you want to upgrade to this long wheelbase body style. Uh, we can't really see why any will want to pay uh, £10,000 more than that for the alternative S500 V6 petrol derivative, though it does offer a lot more power, 457 bhp. Mind you, if you want more power than this S350D can provide, uh, there is another diesel option, the S400D, where the same 3 to straight six engine gets a pokier 335 bhp state of tune. On to the value proposition that S350D pricing represents. Uh, you might expect that a Mercedes would sell at something of a premium over rivals from brands like Audi, BMW and Lexus. But the difference over competing products from those companies uh, really isn't that great. A comparable sportily trimmed BMW 730D would save you about £6,000, but an equivalent Audi A8 50TDI would only save you around £3,500, although that car does come with standard Quattro four-wheel drive. Only Jaguar's XJ 3-litre V6 diesel offers any sort of really significant saving, around £12,000, although that car is a significantly older design. If you are happy to look at a petrol electric hybrid power as an alternative to diesel, you could also consider the Lexus LS500H, which has been priced directly against an S350D. Talking of electric power, the all-electric Tesla Model S is also in the same pricing ballpark. Uh, if you're looking at the Pokia S400D variant, uh, you might also want to factor in the Porsche Panamera 4S Diesel 2. If, having considered all of this, you conclude that it is an S-Class that you really want, uh, then you're going to need to know exactly what's included as standard and how much you're going to need to budget for options. And the answer in both cases is rather a lot. Uh, as mentioned earlier, all mainstream models come with AMG line trim, which includes an AMG body styling package for the side skirts and the front and rear aprons, plus 19-inch five twin-spoke AMG alloy wheels. In addition, there's multi-beam LED headlights that feature ultra-range high-beam technology, and you get the latest Mercedes 9G Tronic automatic transmission with gear shift paddles and Speedtronic cruise control. We also really like the standard Magic Vision control system, which heats the wiper blades and delivers water through them. Uh, the amount and temperature determined by a clever calendar algorithm, which varies its output with the different seasons. Uh, there's also a Parktronic Active Park Assist system that automatically steers you into spaces and includes sensors front and rear and a reversing camera. Plus, in addition, a uh, more conventional luxury segment kit includes auto headlamps and wipers, keyless go comfort keyless entry with a powered boot lid, uh, power folding mirrors, a Thatcham category one alarm and metallic paint.
Inside there's full leather upholstery, electric adjustment with memory settings for the heated front seats and the steering column, uh, Thermotronic two-zone climate control, ambient lighting with a choice of 64 colour settings, an auto-dimming rear view mirror and a multifunction Nappa leather trim steering wheel. Uh, you also get a 12.3 inch instrument binnacle screen to replace the conventional dials and that can be customised with three display styles, classic, sport and progressive. Now this sits alongside the further 12.3 inch center dash screen provided for the standard command online infotainment system which features, well rather a lot. For a start there's a media interface that offers Lingotronic voice control, SD card and USB ports and Apple CarPlay, Android Auto smartphone integration. Uh, via the command setup you can use HDD hard disk satellite navigation with a 3D display. You can Bluetooth link your mobile phone, get live traffic information, set up a speed limiter use Mercedes apps and get in-car internet access for Facebook, internet radio, news and weather reports and Google map routing. Plus there are all the usual stereo functions with a DAB digital radio, a DVD player, a 10 gigabyte music register and a glorious 10 speaker audio setup that uses an ingenious front bass system. This takes the front bass speakers from their usual position in the doors and mounts them in aluminium structures in front of the footwells, uh, which then become resonance chambers, delivering crisp concert hall standard sound, even at the fastest speeds. Uh, Command also includes another feature we really like, what Mercedes calls Car2X communication. Now this is a mobile phone supported exchange of information system, which will see your S-Class sending data on driving conditions back to a central hub, which then shares it with other Mercedes drivers. Now, talking of cutting edge information technology, like most premium brands, Mercedes has developed systems that allow you to monitor many aspects of your car from your smartphone. Every S-Class comes as standard with the Mercedes Me Connect services package, which works via a free app. Now this reminds you when a service is due and it can automatically detect and share with you details on your car's wear and tear items. In addition, the app gives you a one-touch button for fast breakdown recovery, an alarm feature which will tell you when your parking meter is about to expire, and an emergency call system that automatically alerts the rescue services in the event of an accident. Plus, you'll be able to lock or unlock your car from wherever you are and locate your vehicle's position if you've forgotten where you parked it. Uh, if you lend your S-Class out, a uh, geofencing feature will alert you if it leaves a preset geographical boundary. And if your car's ever stolen, a vehicle tracker will show you its location anywhere in the world. S-Class buyers also get a year's free subscription to the Mercedes Me concierge service. Uh, that provides telephone support if you're searching for interesting locations, restaurants or hotels. The six figure sums required for either the Mercedes AMG S63 or S65 models or the Mercedes Maybach S650 ought to entitle you to even more, as of course they do. Uh, the Mercedes Maybach enhancements are mainly concerned with exclusive embellishments to the rear cabin. Uh, the Mercedes AMG variants, meanwhile, get larger 20 inch alloy wheels, a more overt body kit, and upgraded Burmester surround sound systems. Uh, the V12 S65 does without the newer nine speed auto gearbox fitting to the other models, it sticks with the older 7G Tronic setup, but it does get the brand's clever Magic Body Control System that uses a stereo camera to anticipate forthcoming bumps in the road, and the neat curve tilting function that leans the car into bends like a motorcycle and reduces the sideways g-forces that you'd otherwise get. But let's uh, focus on the standard saloon models and talk about the options you might want to look at. Uh, as you expect from any prestige brand in this segment, there are a huge number of these to consider. Uh, the most popular are grouped into two packs called Premium and Premium Plus. Uh, with the Premium package, you get upgraded Nappa leather upholstery, uh, comfort ventilated cooling for the front seats, a closing aid for the doors, a 360 degree surround view camera system, and an electric panoramic glass sunroof 
with an electrically operated sliding sun blind. Uh, upgrade to the Premium Plus package that we've got here, and in addition to all that, you get a 13 speaker, nine channel, 590 watt Burmester stereo system, an air balance package, including a fragrance generator and an oxygen ionizer, active massaging multi-contour front seats, and an energizing comfort package. Now this last feature is new to this revised S-Class model, and it coordinates uh, the climate control, the fragrance dispenser, the music and the interior lighting with seat heating, cooling and massage into six expertly configured programs. It's a one-touch route to complete interior serenity. The other extra cost package we think a lot of S-Class buyers are going to want to look at is the Executive Equipment Line Pack. This is aimed at boardroom buyers who don't want to stretch to Mercedes Maybach motoring, but still like to create a haven of relaxation in the rear. Uh, with this pack, you get heated and comfort ventilation called rear seats with luxury cushioned head restraints and a backrest angle electrically adjustable by up to 37 degrees. Uh, plus there are blinds for the side and rear windows and Thermotronic climate control specifically for the rear cabin. An alternative individual rear seats package gives you the seat embellishments along with temperature controlled cup holders and folding rear tables. Talking of rear cabin improvements, you might also want to consider the optional rear seat entertainment system, which adds a couple of 10.2 inch screens into the rear compartment that connect into the command system and also work via a Blu-ray DVD player and wireless headphones. Uh, this rear seat entertainment setup also comes included as part of a couple of other optional packs aimed at upgrading things in the back. Uh, there is a business telephony package that will be ideal for customers who will habitually be conducting in business in the back of the rest class and who have already ordered the executive equipment line pack we mentioned earlier but the pack that we'd really want is the full house rear luxury lounge package that boardroom level buyers who usually get chauffeured will especially like with this, you also get that rear seat entertainment system, but in this case, uh, that setup is further embellished with a TV tuner. Uh, plus the pack also gives you multi-contour massaging rear seats with extending leg rests and a chauffeur position option for the front passenger seat that pushes it forward and releases even more leg room. As an additional part of this package, that front seat gets extended adjustment too. Enough with rear seat options. What else is available on the options list to tempt you? Uh, well, if someone else is paying, you'll definitely want to look at the most extreme expression of Burmester audio technology. Uh, the company's flagship 26-speaker 1590-watt surround sound system. And uh, if you want to show off ultimate technology in your S-Class, uh, there's a clever remote parking package available uh, to those who've got the surround view camera system included with the two optional premium packs. Now, like similar systems from other brands, the Mercedes Remote Parking Pilot works using a downloadable smartphone app and allows the car to be moved in and out of garages and tight parking spaces remotely. Another really high-tech option is the Night View Assist Plus system that uses uh, military-developed night vision technology so you can more clearly see people and animals in the dark. Uh, what else? Well, you might want to look at a warmth comfort package that gives you heating for the steering wheel and the front armrests. Or you can go further and get a winter package that in addition to those two features also adds heated armrests in the rear, a heated windscreen and a head-up display that projects vital driving information onto the windscreen so the driver can stay focused on the road ahead. Uh, if you have the panoramic roof uh, as part of one of the premium packages we mentioned earlier, you can also pay extra to have that fitted out with Magic Sky Control, which gives the glasswork a switchable transparency to change from dark to light in just a few seconds. That's very neat. Uh, practical options include a stowage crate for the boot, a concertinaing load sill protector, the usual range of roof boxes and carrier bars for roof transportation of skis, snowboards and bikes. Uh, you can't have a tow bar though. 
Onto aesthetics, uh, there's a choice of standard paint shades like anthracite blue metallic, which is what we've got here, or a range of more exclusive extra cost Designio finishes. And you can specify wheels of 19 or 20 inches in size. Rear privacy glass is also available. Uh, moving inside, you want to get the look and feel of the cabin to your specific taste. Standard options include black mocha and black piano lacquer finishes, or you could go for wood trimming with both poplar and burr walnut available, but the ultimate option probably is the open pore black ash finish we've got in this particular car. Finally, if you've opted for one of the rear seat package options, the executive equipment line or the individual rear seats package, uh, you can pay even more for the extremely desirable exclusive Napa leather package we've got here. Now this really will give your S-Class a very high-end feel indeed, covering not only the seats with Napa leather, but also using that material for the upper section of the dash, uh, the grab handles, the center armrest, and the mat pockets. Plus, as part of the exclusive Napa leather package, you also get diamond design for the upholstery, uh, classy contrast stitching throughout, dynamic and microfiber trim for the roof liner and the sun visors, plus velour floor mats and a stainless steel boot sill. This pack can also be matched to a really classy carbon fiber black piano lacquer trim package. Enough with all that, let's switch to safety, which down the years has always been a primary consideration for Mercedes with this car. Uh, let's give you some highlights from the roster this time around. Uh, when this sixth generation S-Class model was first launched in 2013, autonomous braking was a novel and noteworthy feature. Now it's an item fitted to virtually everything the brand makes. Uh, this car system being badged Collision Prevention Assist Plus, and as usual, using a forward-facing camera to scan the road ahead for for potential nose to tail collisions, uh, warning you and priming the brakes if one's detected. If you don't respond or you aren't able to, the car will automatically brake itself to reduce the severity of any potential accident. And of course, uh, there's much more. All variants get crosswind assist that helps to stabilize the car in sudden side gusts of wind and steer control steering assist, which helps you to keep the wheel straight at cruising speeds. Attention assist will monitor your driving reactions for drowsiness and the pre-safe program will tighten the seat belts close the windows and even adjust the seats in a fraction of a second if the stability system deems an accident is inevitable. Uh, the anti-whiplash Neck Pro head restraints will help here too. As you'd expect, tyre pressure monitoring and all the usual electronic aids for traction, braking and stability control are included too, including acceleration skid control and curved dynamic assist systems built in as part of the ESP stability control setup. Of course, you get traffic sign assist, which can read traffic signs as you pass and then display them on the dash. Plus, there's the emergency call system that, as we mentioned earlier, is part of the Mercedes Me Connect services package and automatically alerts the rescue services in the event of an accident. There's also an active bonnet to protect pedestrians, Isofix chart seat fastenings at the rear, and the usual twin front side and curtain airbags. Uh, rear side bags are optional and can be ordered uh, as well as part of a rear seat safety package that additionally includes inflatable seat belt straps, Mercedes calls them belt bags, uh, a cushion bag that sits under the reclining seat cushion, and seat belt buckle extenders that take up any slack in the belt and secure you in it more firmly. Going further requires the specification of the extra cost driving assistance plus package, a box you'll almost certainly want to tick because without it, you won't be able to use any of the autonomous driving technology that's been built into this improved S-Class model. Uh, that's been usefully improved over the drive pilot autonomous system originally introduced into the mid-sized E-Class range so that this S-Class can now drive itself on a much greater variety of roads with no driver input, save for a brief touch on the steering wheel every few seconds so you can reassure the electronics that you're still awake. The main enhancements are based around the way that radar feedback has now been combined with sat-nav data so that the car knows in advance to slow for corners and roundabouts and it can automatically break itself to a halt for say a toll booth or a T-junction. Mercedes calls this route-based speed adaptation. 
To use the autonomous driving capability, you need to be on a dual carriageway and to have activated two of the elements included in the driving assistance package, Active Distance Assist Distronic and Active Steering Assist. Uh, the Distronic feature is basically a super advanced adaptive cruise control that automatically regulates your distance to the car in front and can, if necessary, remotely slow the car with up to 50% of stopping power. Uh, using a further Active Speed Limiter Assist feature, it can also be set to adapt itself to the limits featured on speed signs that you pass. Uh, active steering assist keeps you in the center of your designated lane and will, if needed, apply subtle steering correction to ease you back to where you should be. Ignore this and warning signals from another of the pack's features, uh, active lane keeping assist will tell you that your S-Class has inadvertently crossed the lane delineating lines. If you're uh, trying the autonomous driving capability, you'll also want to experience the clever active lane changing assist system. On a dual carriageway with the active distance assist distronic cruise control and active steering assist operating, uh, the car will overtake by itself. Yes, really. Just hold the indicator stalk for a couple of seconds and it will pull out to pass a slower vehicle and then slot itself back into lane as soon as it's safe to do so. Another included driving assistance plus package feature is the evasive steering assist feature that scans the road ahead for pedestrians and which supports you in making sudden steering maneuvers to avoid them. Uh, pedestrians are also targeted by the active braking assist system which builds on that previously mentioned collision prevention assist plus autonomous braking functionality by instantly warning you and then throwing on the anchors in emergency situations which not only include wayward people but also unexpected tailbacks and crossing traffic. And there's more in the Driver Assistance Plus package too. Active Blind Spot Assist will stop you from dangerously pulling out to overtake in front of another driver. And the pack also includes an upgraded PreSafe Plus version of the PreSafe system we mentioned earlier that better protects you in a rear end collision. Uh, with the PreSafe Plus setup, inflatable bolsters inside the seats put more space between those inside the car and whatever might be about to smash into it. Finally, we'll also mention the potentially life-saving Active Emergency Stop Assist system, which senses if the driver no longer has control of the vehicle, perhaps through a sudden illness. If that's the case, then the electronics will instantly take control and bring the car to a safe, controlled halt. It's all very reassuring. A decade ago, the kind of progress that this sixth generation S-Class has made in terms of efficiency would have sounded like a utopian dream. Yet the reality is that fuel consumption and CO2 emissions have been virtually halved in that time. A class leading drag coefficient that can be as low as 0.23 CD helps here and so do weight savings brought about by use of aluminium in over 50% of the vehicle's construction. All of this is as it was before in this W222 series model. What's changed is the engine wear that you find beneath the bonnet of the mainstream models, uh, with the big news being the introduction of an all-new straight-six three-litre diesel unit from Mercedes' latest family of black pump-fueled units. These newest diesel power plants are designed to meet the latest, more stringent real driving emissions tests that not before time will more realistic reflect the actual running cost figures that vehicle owners are likely to achieve. Uh, thanks primarily to the introduction of a clever stepped bowl combustion process and Camtronic variable valve lift, uh, Mercedes is claiming a fuel consumption improvement of 7% compared to the previous S350D model. Uh, that figure is also aided by the installation of a more efficient 9-speed 9G Tronic Plus automatic gearbox. That translates into S350D combined cycle economy of 52.3 miles per gallon and emissions of 139 grams per kilometer of CO2. To give you some perspective, that is fractionally better than a rival Audi A850 TDI or Jaguar XJ 3 liter V6, but it is still significantly behind the figures returned by a comparable BMW 730D. 
Even greater efforts have been made when it comes to petrol power, although that will be of relatively limited interest in our market, where take-up on green pump-fueled S-Class models is tiny. Nevertheless, it's true that the inline petrol 3-litre six-cylinder engine introduced into the revised design offered in our country in the S500 is the most innovative engine in the lineup. Now, this variant can boast a huge efficiency improvement with fuel economy up from the 31.7 mpg figure achieved by the pre-facelifted version of this derivative to 40.9 mpg now. Emissions are now super competitive too, rated at 157 grams per kilometre of CO2. Both these stats are way better than those achieved by the nearest directly comparable class competitor, BMW 750i. Mercedes has achieved such a startling improvement with this 3-litre petrol engine by radical engineering changes. Uh, this six-cylinder unit now featuring a 48-volt electrical system supplementing the usual 12-volt setup. Uh, plus, instead of a conventional alternator, this power plant has an integrated starter generator that uh, provides power for energy sapping items like the water pump and the air conditioning compressor. It regulates engine idling and is integral to the brake energy regeneration system. In short, this is what Mercedes describes as a systematically electrified engine, a phrase the brand has coined to avoid confusion with the plug-in hybrid powertrain also developed for this car that offers a full electric driving range of up to uh, around 30 miles. Of course, even Mercedes engineers can't work miracles and the big conventional V8 and V12 petrol models will drink thirstily from the green pump. To be fair, the Mercedes AMG S63 is significantly more efficient than before thanks to the replacement of the Oldtec 5.5 litre V8 previously used uh, with the lighter and more sophisticated 4 litre twin turbo V8 unit that has for some time featured in the brand's smaller full fat AMG models. That change improves combined fuel consumption from around 27 mpg to 31.4 mpg and the CO2 reading also improves from 237 grams per kilometre to 203 grams per kilometre. Although that still won't be enough to get you any Christmas cards from Greenpeace. Uh, plutocratic types who really want to thumb their noses at the green lobby will opt for the V12 S65 Mercedes AMG flagship model which is as thirsty and dirty as it ever was, uh, delivering 23.6 7 mpg and 279 grams per kilometer. For the other V12 variant in the range, the Mercedes Maybach S650, the figures are 22.2 mpg on the combined cycle and 289 grams per kilometer of CO2. All S-Cast models get an eco start-stop function to cut the engine when you don't need it, uh, when you're stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. Uh, plus there's a gliding feature which disconnects the engine from the transmission to save fuel at cruising speeds. The diesels, as you'd expect, use an AdBlue system to cleanse their fuel of impurities uh, using additive from a reservoir that will need to be topped up at regular services. In addition, of course, the driver will need to play his or her part. Uh, obviously, to get anywhere near the returns we've quoted, you'll need to set the Dynamic Select driving mode system into its eco setting. And uh, now this marginally limits the accelerator pedal curve and also slightly restricts the output of the uh, seat heating, uh, the heated rear window and the air conditioning. You can also bring up two options in the instrument binnacle which will help. A consumption screen shows your average fuel figure and an eco display grades your driving based on acceleration, decelerating and constancy of speed showing in real time the bonus frugality you've achieved through careful driving since the start of your trip. And there's also a fuel consumption section on the Facia's command central display screen which will give you graphical evidence of your success or otherwise in achieving maximum efficiency. What else? Uh, well, bear in mind that all versions of this car will be subject to the government's tax levy for models costing over £40,000, and that means road tax will stand at £450 per year for the first five years of ownership. Um, the other thing we need to tell you about is that the uh, comprehensive three-year unlimited mileage warranty is uh, built on by Mercedes Mobilo scheme, which uh, delivers breakdown cover for up to 30 years, as long as you continue to have your car serviced at a Mercedes main dealer. 
And it's worth knowing that your maintenance outlay can be kept a little in check by going for the optional service care package, uh, which takes care of routine maintenance, spreading the cost of regular servicing, guaranteeing the price of parts and labour for up to four services, and also covering the cost of all recommended service items, and that includes brake fluid, uh, spark plugs, air filters, fuel filters and screen wash. There's also an assist dashboard service indicator which monitors engine use and tells you exactly when a garage visit's due. And it's also worth mentioning uh, the, the optional Mercedes Me Connect services package includes remote self-diagnostic capability and that will enable your S-Class to monitor wear and tear items and to alert your local dealer to let you know if something needs seeing to. You can also insure your car through Mercedes, although most company drivers will have that included in their lease cost. Uh, if you do pay the insurance yourself on your car, uh, you'll need to know about the ratings. This S350D variant sits in Group 47E, although that rises to Group 48E or 49E, depending on your selection between the various optional uh, premium and executive equipment packages. All the other derivatives in the range are rated at a top-of-the-shop Group 50E. As for the question of residual values, well, you can't expect too much from a full luxury segment saloon, and you will certainly need to manage your expectations quite a lot when it comes to the V8 and the V12 petrol models. Uh, the diesels, though, should perform as well, if not better than obvious premium brand sector rivals, uh, up at around 45% after three years and 60,000 miles. This S-Class spearheads technological development, not only for Mercedes-Benz, but for the automotive industry as a whole, and it has done for decades. It's that important, and is why this is, and will continue to be, the world's best-selling full-size luxury sector saloon. In this improved form, the sixth generation version remains very competitive with, and in some cases a step ahead of, more recently introduced luxury segment rivals. Now that was vital if it was going to be able to continue to compete with everything from a comparably costly Audi A8 to a Bentley Continental Flying Spur potentially priced at three times as much. No other rival has as difficult or as wide-ranging a brief, but then no other car brings this one's timeless class and effortless superiority to such an advanced and wide-ranging portfolio of talents. It can power to supercar speeds and AMG guys uh, deliver an average of over 50 miles per gallon in this much improved mainstream S350D diesel form and it can be specified to eerily steer, power and brake itself at a cruise in whatever form you decide on. Yes, other rivals may look more avant-garde or handle with a touch more involvement. In overall terms though, Mercedes has done enough here to enable this S-Class to remain a benchmark for the kind of luxury saloon that every prestige brand would like to build. As it always was, uh, this is a reference point for the current state of automotive technology. The best car in the world? Well, you'll feel like it is if you buy one.